Hey, what's up? Me again, back with another video. Today, Arturia have hooked us up with the brand new Mini Lab 3, which is the new iteration in their Mini Lab lineup. This is a 25 mini key controller designed to control all the sounds in your digital audio workstation. Uh, plus, it comes with a bunch of sounds uh, from the Arturia V collection. So, in this video, let's take a look at the hardware and let's get it set up with Ableton Live. Cool, so let's take a look at the hardware of this Mini Lab 3. We've got four new little sliders, which is different from the Mark II version. Um, this is a nice little option. Don't really see many MIDI controllers with little mini sliders on them, so it's really nice to see. Eight pots for controlling sounds on your digital audio workstation as well as analog lab. Um, eight pads for drum samples and all that kind of good stuff. Um, plus on the back here, we have a five pin MIDI output. Awesome for anybody looking to play and sequence their external synthesizers. Um, the keys feel really great. They're pretty much the same. Um, so let's take a look at how we can integrate this into Ableton Live. So the first thing you need to do when hooking this up to Ableton Live is you need to open up uh, the MIDI Control Center. This is um, uh, a piece of software that you can download from Arturia's website. It kind of gives you control over all of the parameters on the Mini Lab. Um, and you really just want to check you're running the right firmware. And once you've done that, it'll be able to install. If there's one available, you should be good to go. Now, I've already done this. And now the next thing you need to do is you need to head over to um, Ableton Live and we're going to go to Preferences and just make sure that we've got it all set up. So Link MIDI is where you need to be. Control Surface that gives you this drop down menu and you'll see we have the Mini Lab 3 as an available control surface. Um, ensure that Mini Lab 3 is set up in the MIDI input and the MIDI output. And then you also want to make sure that you've got track and sync uh, checked for all those options there as well. So that will ensure that the Mini Lab is functional and has integrated perfectly with um, Ableton Live. So once you've done this, Mini Lab will now be integrated into Ableton and we can use it in a multitude of ways. So the first way is to use it as a control surface. So I can use this black encoder here and I can cycle between um, different uh, scenes in Ableton Live um, and I can trigger those entire scenes um, just by clicking um, down on the encoder. And if I hit shift and this pad here with the square on it, I can stop that sequence. It's basically stopping. Um, I can um, hold shift and use this encoder and I can cycle between all of my different tracks that I have set up, which is really handy because once I've selected a track, all of these little sliders, these new little sliders become really, really useful. So the first slider I can use to um, change the volume on the channel. Uh, the second slider will um, affect the um, send A. This one here is send B. And then the fourth slider is for um, changing the panning which is really nice. And that's the same for every single channel. So I can just easily move to the next channel and just, you know, add in things um, as I wish. This is kind of cool because it comes sort of performative in a way. You can use these two little sliders here to kind of dial in some sends on a track and um, all that kind of stuff, which is really nice. Um, if I hit shift and pad, um, this sort of changes um, the pad behavior. So in this state, it means I can use the pads uh, to trigger clips. So it becomes a clip launcher. So the color of the pad uh, will represent where you have a clip present in Ableton. So for instance, I have these two um, pads here and they're sort of blue, which is kind of the same color as these two um, drum and percussion tracks that I have set up in Ableton. And when I trigger them, it'll play the clip.
So as you can see in that little jam, I was just triggering clips via the pads, experimenting with some different arrangements, as well as playing with the effects sends with these sliders. So really great for kind of being a little bit performative and kind of experimenting with the clips that you have. Um, it's really easy to just sort of trigger them um, and use this encoder to cycle between all of your scenes and tracks and can apply control to all of the sounds. Really cool. Now, if I hit shift and pad, uh, it now means that each of these drum pads um, become um, available to trigger sounds that I have installed on this drum rack here. So if I uh, navigate to um, track one, I have it armed, which means its um, incoming MIDI will be received and I can use these drum pads to trigger sounds. Which is really, really nice. And these knobs here, these will assign to all of the available uh, macros that you have set up on your drum rack. So this pot here, for instance, is assigned to the tune of my kick drum. All right, so now I'm gonna navigate over to this track I have here, and I have an instance of Analog Lab loaded. Um, and if I hit Shift and Program, um, you'll see now on the display screen there, it says um, Arturia. And that means that the keyboard is now controlling um, any available Arturia software that you have loaded as a plugin. So as you can see, these sliders are now mapped to um, Analog Lab. And you might notice actually that um, Analog Lab has also had a slight redesign, um, introducing these faders that kind of correspond to the, um, the faders that we have on the Mini Lab. All the pots are kind of like pre-mapped and loaded, so you don't really have to do anything. Um, and what's also great is this black encoder here allows you to cycle between all of the presets um, that you have loaded in Analog Lab. Now, if you don't have Analog Lab installed, you're just using uh, Mini Lab for the first time, you'll get 500 presets from um, Arturia's um, Analog Lab um, collection. Uh, and these are really great for all kinds of different sounds, everything from bass, pads, leads, and effects. So if I hit shift, I can um, navigate through the different kind of categories that I have. So bass, keys, electric piano, etc., And I can click to enter that category, enter again, and then it will give me all of the available options that I have on my system um, for those particular presets that you can load and play directly from the controller. So as you can see, super hands-on and really immediate, really fun, it's all pre-mapped and ready to go. If I hit the shift button, I have um, these options I can change here. On the pad one, I have an arpeggiator. So if I um, hit press shift and up, I can turn it on. And if I hit press shift and long hold on this pad, I can actually change the parameters of the arpeggiator. So I can turn it on, I can change the arpeggiator mode, the division, um, I can apply some swing to the arpeggiator. I also have the arpeggiator rate. I can change the clock sync from internal to external, and I can also change the octave range of the arpeggiator. There's also a chord mode, which gives you the ability to enter in some notes and trigger that chord just using a single key. So it's kind of like a chord memory. To do that, all you need to do is press shift and hold and enter in the notes you want to be in the chord and then voila. This is perfect for someone like me who doesn't understand how to play the keys and is just looking into enter some simple chord progressions. Really handy stuff. So there you have it, brand new Mini Lab from Arturia. Really cool, feels really great. You might be someone like me that already has a fairly complex MIDI controller um, set up in your studio, but you kind of need something really small and compact that you just need to grab and set up on your desktop just to simply enter in some notes really quickly without having to go through that big rigmarole of having everything set up. This is something that I always use in that particular situation. So yeah, loving the redesign, loving the sliders and how they integrate with the software and also the five pin MIDI. Super cool, never really see that much on MIDI controllers this size, so a really great feature to have there as well. Should probably also mention, comes in three colors, comes in black, comes in white, and it comes in double black, which is black keys uh, and a black faceplate as well. So again, there's a lot of options there. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.